Hello once again and welcome to Optics Trades YouTube channel. We are going to review Vortex's high-end open reflex red dot sight today, the Razer. Vortex is still quite a young company established in 2002. They make all kinds of sports optics for pretty much every need. Their products are made in China, Philippines, USA and Japan and they're known for having a great price to performance ratio. They are also steadily gaining in popularity, partly because of the quality of their products and partly because of their great warranty terms. Razer, as I said, is Vortex's high-end open reflex red dot sight that uses a similar form factor to Vortex Venom. It is 45 millimeters long, 30 millimeters wide <clears throat> and around 30 millimeters high. The sight weighs 38 grams and it comes with a fixed Picatinny mount which weighs 27 grams. The total weight is 65 grams which is still in the lightweight area when it comes to open reflex sights. The lens is 28 millimeters wide and around 17 millimeters high providing a large enough view for the user to acquire targets quickly. It is made in Japan as you can see here and it features an interesting battery compartment on the side. The tray can be pulled out with fingers if you use some force but it is much more comfortable to use a tool. A tool for opening the tray is not provided in the box so you'll have to be a little bit creative and opening it. You can use a screwdriver or a similar tool. Here I have a tool that you get with some other red dot sights and with it you can easily uh, pry open the battery tray and you can see that it uses a CR2032 battery. It's a pretty standard battery so it can be found in every shop mostly. And um, it's also a great thing that the battery compartment is on the side. You don't have to remove it from the firearm in order to change the battery. <clears throat> and re-zeroing is thus also avoided. Two dot sizes are available, 3 MOA and 6 MOA. This is the 3 MOA version as you can see here and it is much more suitable for a rifle because of the more precise aiming point. While the 6 MOA version will work better on a pistol since it is large enough for the user to quickly see the dot when aiming at targets close by. The construction is very rugged, the housing is made of aluminum and just by looking at it you can tell that this can withstand recoil of any caliber out there. And if we compare the housing with Vortex Venom that uses, uses a similar form factor, this one is definitely sturdier and more robust. And the frame that surrounds the lens is very well made, uh, granting a great protection to the lens that it surrounds. There are two screws as we are used to for elevation and windage adjustments but before making any adjustments to these screws you have to unscrew the lock screw here. Uh, now you can proceed making the adjustments. What I like and what really adds to the premium feel of this device is that these screws click when rotated. One click is one MOA and um, it is much easier to zero the sight if the screws clicks, so the screws click because you don't need any additional tools that you get with some other red dot sights where the screws don't click. Altogether there is 170 MOA of elevation range and 114 MOA of windage range. What about the footprint? As you can see it's not the same as on Vortex Viper and Vortex Venom. These two use the Dr. Noblex standard. Now Razer uses uh, the same standard as Seymour STS and RTS red dot sights. There are not as many mounts available for this standard on the market as there are for the Dr. Noblex standard but it's still quite a popular footprint. To make things easier Vortex added a low Picatinny adapter uh, in the box and there is also this shim which can help you mount it on uh, adapters with for other footprints. I will 
uh, explain that in detail later on. There are 10 illumination intensity levels. The highest are strong daylight compatible and the lowest can be used uh, when it gets duskier. The buttons for setting the illumination intensity levels are located here in between the diode and the lens. And I'm not the biggest fan of this design since you have to be careful not to block the beam of light projected by the diode when setting the intensity, else you won't see the dot. On the other hand, however, the controls here are protected from accidental changes. So if you bump the side somewhere, if you have buttons on the side, you might click them and it will change the intensity here. They're protected from blows. The side features an automatic turn off after six hours of inactivity. The battery life is 30,000 hours on the lowest setting and around 150 hours on the highest setting. The dot is nicely defined and round shaped. Uh, but I will show um, the dot at the end of this video, so you can just uh, go to that part if you wish to see uh, all the illumination intensity levels. There is some blue tint, as you can see, and the blue tint is most apparent on the edges of the lens and mostly limited to the upper part. There is no blue tint in the center, and compared to Vortex Venom, the optics are on a higher level because of the quality of the glass used. Vortex claims that the glass used for this site is currently among the best that they have at disposal. And on top of that, anti-reflective coatings are used on razor. When tested next to Vortex Venom, the image is a bit clearer on this one, but the difference is really not that huge. So the magnification is a real one times, as you can see, meaning that you can comfortably look through with both eyes open. What we like with Vortex is their great warranty terms, which might convince, uh, which convinces many people to go for their products. And once you choose a Vortex product, you see that they do not only have great warranty terms, but they're also uh, great value for money. So if you ever have a problem with this site or any of their products, Vortex promises to repair or replace it without without you paying, so free of charge, which is really really great. In the box you'll, found a, you'll find a plastic cover which can be easily put on and removed. You also get two allen keys so uh, um, one is used for the screws which attach the side to the Picatinny mount, the other is used for uh, the elevation windage adjustments and unlocking and uh, fixing back the lock screw. And um, you also get an instruction manual, of course. This is the box that the razor comes in. So we have foam for protection and so on. And what I find really interesting is this. So this is the, uh, they call it the shim. And um, this shim is used when mounting razor to some other red dot footprints. I tried mounting this shim on an EAW adapter for a doctor's site and it fits on the adapter nicely. The pins on the adapter, however, are a little bit too long so they stick out above the shim. I have the adapter here and I will show how this works. So this is um, how the shim is placed on the adapter. Now if you can see, these pins stick out above the shim which makes it impossible to fit the red dot sight on it. And if you wish to use the EAW adapter, you have to file down these pins. But uh, I know some other manufacturers of such adapters that use shorter pins. And with those adapters, this shim might actually work without you having to file down any of the material uh, on the adapter. So I think that this is really an innovative solution. Because this standard is really not all that um, widespread. Um, and I like the fact that if you have a um, Dr. Noblex adapter, you can actually use the shim and it will work nevertheless. In some cases, you will just have to file down the very top of the pins. Because this is a high-end reflex, open reflex site made by Vortex, the price uh, is around... 500 euros, 
So um, this is priced quite high compared to Vortex Viper and Venom because it's the improved version. Well, we're now at the end and we'll now point out some good things, some things that need improvement. Well, the advantages are definitely the big window, which is a little bit bigger than on Vortex Venom. Um, it makes target acquisition much faster. The quality of the image as well, on a high level thanks to the quality glass used for the lens, and the elevation and windage adjustments, um, because they click when rotated, so making the zeroing process much, much easier. And there are some other uh, things that some people might like, some people might dislike, like the location of the buttons for illumination intensity and so on. As well, this shim here, this is a really a cool addition and the fact that it already comes with a low Picatinny mount is also great. Some things that I don't like, well, some people might say, might think that this is a definitely, it's more expensive than other Vortex Red Hot sites and probably too expensive, too expensive for some people, which is not necessarily a disadvantage, but still worth pointing out. The tool for opening the battery tray is not provided, it would be great uh, to provide one, uh, because it would be much easier to open, opening this tray without actually damaging or leaving scratches on the surface. And also, um, quite a lot of blue tint on the edges for a red hot site at this price point. What I can say at the end is that um, this is a definitely a high quality red hot site. It's very robust, rugged, durable, and if you want to go for top of the line in the field of compact open reflex sites, then this is the right choice definitely. If you're not willing to spend this much, go for the Venom and you'll sti still get a great, great red dot with excellent warranty terms. Thank you for watching, I hope you found this review useful. If you did, like this video, subscribe to your YouTube channel, check out our other videos on Red Dot site made by Vortex, and see you next time. Bye bye!